travel and on parenting and about technology and literature and art and anything under the sun. The sun. We've been growing very quick. We're three times bigger than we were a year ago on all of our usage metrics. And if you know. This video is not for the faint of heart. With a subject matter as obscure as this, I realize that I may be misconstrued in my message. But I feel like this has to be said. Cora is a site with many problems, those of which contain a pedophile infestation. Not only is this a problem, but the bot system which is in abundance in a site like this seems to do utterly nothing to stop it. And that's where the problem lies. The problem lies. Do anyone trade with me? I'm so horny, not bothered about age. DM me. Hit me up. I have all types of no-limit megaphiles. Incest. Teens. PYT, and many more kinky megaphiles available. Message me on Telegram using the link below. PYT, a word that in any other context would be innocuous, but here it has a sinister and even insidious connotation. PYT, or Pretty Young Thing, as seen in Michael Jackson's song of the same name, has a meaning that you'd pretty much expect. It usually denotes a young girl. But here's where the meaning becomes sinister. In many, well, let's say cheese pizza spaces, PYT is used as a slang term or a code for something. This is often used to get under the sensors and moderation tools of many websites. Now, it is through the website of Telegram where these trades are often, well, made. This quickly turns to the worst when you realize a site like Quora is actively hosting stuff like this. And let's just call it like it is. It's pretty much child porn being hosted and even traded openly on these sites with no care or regard to who or whatever sees it. Now, because these criminals are utterly so terrible at, well, covering their tracks, there are notable buzzwords to look out for that are warning signs for content that usually features child porn, such as PYT, which I've covered earlier. There are also other words that may seem innocuous, like teens. There are also terms they may use which denote ages. For example, they may say, oh, I'm trading 10 to 14. DM me for details. This is just one example of how insidious this trading is, and it often goes unnoticed to the untrained eye. But it happens almost everywhere on Quora which fucking sucks. Now, a pattern I see that often overlaps with content of this nature is that I often see these links being propagated in very, uh, let's say, freaky spaces. For whatever reason, there is no place you can go on Quora that does not have this. If it's over 18 plus, then there's bound to be some telegram links or some people trying to promote their trades. These quote-unquote trades, however, feature underage people in them. And they sometimes don't even hide the pictures either. Sometimes they're even on their home pages where they feature actual pictures of minors undressed and in various positions that are very, very vulnerable. 
There is such a very visceral feeling when seeing shit like that, especially out in the open on various homepages, on various profiles. No other site that I've seen has this problem to such a degree. Twitter is a cesspool and has its own predator problems, yes, that is true, but not once can you see one page that has open child porn links and pictures of actual children in various stages of undress on them. Even Reddit, which is accessible in its own, has things to fight against this, but Cora has to be one of the worst sites for this, because their moderation team system or whatever the fuck they call it, is so utterly bad at stopping this. Hell, I bet a blind raccoon can do a far better job than these bots ever could at stopping things like this from propagating. And it's not enough just reporting, because when you report one, 10 others seem to fall in their place. From what I've seen, Cora seems to be a meetup spot for all types of predators, degenerates, and weirdos. And Telegram seems to be the jumping off point, which is why you see so many Telegram links being used as means for, well, child porn trading. So this is coming up again, so I feel like I need to talk about it. Do not use Telegram, the messenger, at all. There is no reason to use it. Four men have been arrested for their suspected involvement in spreading obscene materials in another Telegram chat group. Over CNA saw that the group had more than 25,000 members. Now they've contributed more than 120,000 photos and videos and more than 1,700 files. The group also openly advertised its affiliated Telegram groups in the chat. Link for Discord Teen Trade Server is in bio. Join on Discord Teen Server 13 to 18. I got no limit teens. I got no limit teens. DM me. Ever since the internet's creation, teen culture has been a part of it. From emo Tumblr posts in the 2010s to dial up AOL chat spaces in the 1990s, teen spaces have been integral to the function of internet culture. So much so that nowadays it seems like it's almost ingrained into it, with words like Riz and Skibbity Toilet being the most popular. Yeah, let's stop that in its tracks before it gets really, uh, you can say, cringe. Yeah, we had to have some jokes in this video because it's gonna get dark very quickly. Now, Cora seems to have a unique topic in this conversation since its website is very predicated on communities, much like Reddit and many other websites. But in the ways that Cora does it, it almost does it in an addictive and incessant way, which is where we get teen spaces. Now, this is where it turns dark. Due to the exorbitant amount of quote-unquote teen spaces on Korra, it seems that predators have a buffet's worth of potential victims to pick on. These predators all seem to be male most of the time and have very weird tendencies. Now, most of these internet basket cases could do some good from therapy, Seeing as they spend majority of their time on Korra, trying to go after kids. They even spend majority of their time upvoting and even interacting with posts from children and teens. It wouldn't be enough just being creepy either. They have to turn up a notch by making full-blown advances to minors. Hell, some of them are even bold enough to try to solicit imagers in comment threads. This problem has gotten so bad that many spaces ended up having to be deleted by their owners or completely abandoned. 
The spaces that are still up are constantly being bombarded with weird advances from grown adults. But it gets even worse since there are actual spaces masquerading and pretending like they're actual teen spaces, but are actually just fronts for, well, child porn exchanges. One telltale sign for a space being a false teen space is it being painfully misspelled and poorly formatted. Most teen spaces, or spaces for that matter in general, are mostly formatted correctly in the English language, but with these false spaces, they have to play it up to make it seem like they're minors. This faking is often a poor attempt since most adults who make these spaces are usually only uh, half-assing it in order to get what they really want, which is CSAM material. They aren't worried about being convincing, they just want what they want and they're gonna get it any way they can. Which is honestly horrifying to think about and it's creepy as fuck. But in general, it's honestly hard to find a teen space that isn't overrun by predators or creepy people. Unless of course the comments are all disabled which is in most teen spaces nowadays. Which is important, but I think it signifies the unsafeness of the site in a unique degree. Your content has been deleted. Your content has been deleted as it was found to be in violation of our sexual exploitation and abuse policy. Now, at first glance, this message may seem like it's in response to an actual sexual predator's exploits, you could say. But no, this is a common message given to pretty much anyone and everyone who tries to expose those who prey against children. Now, this wouldn't be a problem if Korra was the one to stop these predators themselves, but no, there is some sort of bias here. Now, the way these bots work is in a sort of paradoxical way. It's in a sort of strides and effect, if you will. These bots actively stop anyone from trying to expose predators themselves, which again, I could see as being a logical thing, but these bots don't do jack shit. And for a system as outdated as this, You'd think there would be some sort of thing in place to stop predators, but apparently that is outdated and hasn't been put in for like the whole entire site's history, but you know, that's just how these sites work, I guess. Now, a thing that makes me absolutely fucking mad is how these predators get to walk scot-free for what seems like months and months. I mean, unless you're actively searching for these people, then, you know, they're not going to be stopped very easily. These accounts are made in bulk, and they often stay for a long time. I've seen some accounts who have done some really fucked up shit not being punished at all. These accounts have been up for more than, what, five months to even a year, and nothing has happened, even if you report it just going to fall by the wayside. And I feel like this would not be a problem if the entire moderation staff wasn't non-existent. The entire moderation team, if it even exists, is completely made of bots, which is a problem for a site as big as this. But I suspect this has something to do with some corporate overstepping. Flora is a glass house. I say that to illustrate the concept that Cora is not what it seems. Run by Adam D'Angelo, Cora has been going strong for the better part of 14 years. But beyond that, it's safe to say that Cora is a dead husk at this point. A boring facsimile, if you will. Cora has been on what I like to call a steady decline in terms of quality and popularity for what seems like years now. And AI seems to be the one thing that will ultimately be Cora's downfall. 
Now, I called Cora a glass house to illustrate the concept that many affluent tech magnates run into the problem in which their creation deteriorates. This is something that Cora is going through now. Sometimes this is due to sheer incompetence, and other times it's often due to an outside influence, such as botnets or AI programs that infiltrate a site. Hmm, <clears throat> Twitter. But now, in the context of Quora, we seem to have a unique problem. Adam D'Angelo, in many interviews and personal statements of his, has always talked about implementing AI into his software and into the website of Quora. Poe, a company spearheaded by Adam himself and is touted as a direct competitor of OpenAI and the infamous ChatGPT, is where things get interesting. Adam wants to take over OpenAI. This is because of Poe's slow start. But some of you may be saying, what does this have to do with predators? Well, let me explain. Adam's startling obsession with AI programs may just be taking away resources from what really matters on this site. And that is because predators have been able to exploit the system for so long due to lackluster moderation. And I personally feel like this is a risk that any big website like Quora just cannot afford to take no matter what. I feel personally that Cora has been a metaphorical corpse for years. Hell, half the user base seems to be a bunch of scammers and lying grifters half the time. Most of the questions are fake to a laughable degree at times. It seems like Cora should have been put down a long time ago or given better management. Because at this point, it's getting kind of ridiculous with the amount of shit people are able to uh, get away with on the site. Or what seems like forever now. As a female pedophile, what would you say to anti-female pedophiles? Would you hurt them or teach them that female pedophilia is a good thing? Here once again, 53rd SF Pride Parade, the second year right here. And MAPS, an acronym for Minor Attracted Person, is a group of disgusting people who uses the LGBT label as an excuse for their horrid behavior. What's more insulting is that they have their own flag for it. I'm standing my ground. My pride flag. The same grown man acting like a teen? That guy? You say you don't act on it, but your best friends with a supposedly 15 year old. You are 31. You have no purpose being in teen spaces. It's not about being Ben. It's about exposing you being a pedo. Keep doing it and I'll be here every time to expose you. With no surprise, they are also in Korra. With Korra's moderation team being next to none, they are able to post whatever they want. There are even people on Quora defending this revolting type of behavior. I tend to avoid using the word innocent to talk of children. If it means naive and honest, then yes I can dig it. But I feel like it's often used with a not guilty meaning. But children chill for the fun of it, they steal for comfort, they fight. I often feel the perception of children as innocent beings by adults is an excuse to keep them under control. Most of these examples I'm providing you are still up by the time I'm making this video. Shows you how horrid this godforsaken site is. It's midnight and I can't sleep. Anyone want to join the struggle? DM me if you're bored there. Always open. Sexy young man, you ever been sucked off by a grown man? Well? Dude, you're embarrassing, get a life. Lol, you are actually a very ugly little dude, scared to show how ugly you are. Hiding your face, you look like a true. <laughs> yeah, the internet is surely a strange and special place, isn't it? Now, remember what I said earlier about teen spaces? 
to never trust them, then this message still rings true. Teen spaces have to be the worst hotbed for a particular group I've ever seen. You can't go one moment without scrolling or posting and seeing these creeps commenting on every single picture they see. It is morbidly funny, but I think a post in a teen space perfectly encapsulates the one fundamental issue with Cora itself. Quote, I know I haven't posted in a while, but this place is filled with pedos, creeps, and weirdos, and I decided to limit my activity on here. So to anyone I ghosted, I'm truly sorry, but if you get 100 plus DMs constantly, you would also feel overwhelmed and ghost. If you want to chat again, please send me a DM, but if your profile is creepy, I will not respond." End quote. But wait, wait, wait. Look at the comments under this post, some of which contain the most degenerate and fucking non bidding responses I've ever seen in the history of Korra. Okay, I may be over exaggerating, but you get my point. The thing is, I found your post creepy and judgmental. I don't want to read anything you write. And this motherfucker says agreed. I don't even have to check to know that both these accounts may or may not house some very, um, let's just say, creepy stuff under them. But even worse is one that says, quote unquote, can I see yo tits? I mean, you just can't make this shit up. What the fuck is wrong with Cora? But I think even worse is the accounts who actually go through with the grooming process. I've had multiple viewers from the Cora video that I first made recount stories of being groomed or have friends who have been groomed on the website of Cora. And I just have to ask, why does this even have to exist? I mean, I know other sites on the internet have this problem, yes, but it seems like Cora uniquely has a free for all mentality that utterly disregards and jeopardizes user ability and user safety, especially when it comes to minors who may or may not use this for recreational purposes. Quora is a recreational site, as seen by the many, many millions of posts that can be seen every single day. There are also thousands and thousands of thousands of countless spaces being made every single day. That adds up and that becomes a problem when you realize that half the user base, a large fucking majority of the user base, is pedophiles. The same exact market that is being catered to unknowingly by this site's algorithms. Right now, you can just search up teen space and there are thousands of spaces. None of them have restrictions and if they do, the restrictions are usually not hard to bypass. Even then, you don't even have to look hard. These teen spaces are given to you on a silver platter, usually often through algorithms that recommend them directly to you in the search bar. Now again, this would not be a problem if Cora wasn't uh, so bad, and it shows. Cora is damn near a wild wild west where pretty much anything can take place. I mean, right now, you can pretty much sell and trade dark web material with no type of safeguard at all. No one sees this as a problem. There are thousands of spaces right now that you can go to that actively trade child porn, and it's sickening. Actually, think about it. Thousands of kids every day are probably being predatorized and taken advantage of on the very site that many people call home, and this is happening often under the noses of many users. And I know that many people on Quora right now can't see it, because it's only available to teens, which is the biggest demographic it seems in social media right now. And you know what's crazy? Right now, I can just make an account off the fly with no type of age regulation or verification of any kind. 
all I have to do is put to them 18 years of age and I'm out the door. It's pretty much too easy. Something that I've covered in my last video is having more safeguards uh, for minors when it comes to websites. Many people misconstrue my message in that, but yes. It is important that minors are a protected class when it comes to websites of this nature. Many people think that I'm calling for censorship. I'm not. I'm calling to protect children, which is a perfectly reasonable thing to think about. Of course, these websites won't do it, but someone has to take a stand. To go on a minor tangent, I think the reason grooming is so popular is because of these very teen spaces, of which contain pictures of minors. Now you may be saying, yes, that's bad, but let me explain. Minors in these spaces tend to want self-expression, which is cool, but most of these teens have lives that are completely online, meaning most of them are lonely and are looking for some sort of semblance of acceptance and social fulfillment with their peers, or what seems like their peers. So what these teens do is that they often post pictures of themselves, often innocuous ones too, mostly selfies. Now most of these teens have low self esteem so they ask people to rate them, and this is where it gets kind of dark and sinister. Oftentimes, these otherwise innocuous and innocent pictures are used as softcore material, let's say, for these creeps. This softcore material is enough to get them real jumpy, and I mean real jumpy, they're fucking thirsty too. They're in the comments asking for DM and, and pictures and, and, and all this other weird shit. This site is a goddamn diary cesspool. And I honestly feel saddened for all the teens who came to Quora looking for a form of self-acceptance and fulfillment and self-esteem raising. Instead, they've gotten their innocence utterly stripped bit by bit as uh, creeps are basically clawing at them in comment sections and in DMs too. Even worse, Quora allows for private messaging, which is a problem a really big problem for sites of this nature, and if you don't know why, then let me explain. In online communities and mobile chat slash messaging apps, a private message, abbreviated as PM, is a type of communication wherein the message can only be viewed or read by a specific recipient or group of people. This is also known as direct message, DM, or personal message. In simple terms, that means unless you screenshot it, nobody will know, which Quora does. This is obviously a problem because it makes predators harder to spot and catch. Unless the teens themselves or any catch groups screenshot messages, then acts of grooming oftentimes go unknown and unpunished, utterly sitting in the vaults of Quora's private messaging thing or whatever you would call it. I'm not a very techie person. This obviously contributes to the problem at hand. My daughter at the fairground. I love when she wears leggings because I get to see that booty jiggle. My friend messing with my daughter's first, my eldest daughter, such a kitty. Alright, for me to come over here and play till she gets through shopping? Oh, sure, fine, Daisy Bell, come on in. Hey, fellas, look who's here. Daisy Bell. Daisy Bell! <laughs> The fact that Cora has been able to stay up this long is nothing short of a fucking miracle. The amount of depravity that can be shown on this site is immeasurable. The figure of Pandora's box of which has been opened by the very creation of Cora is nothing short but astounding. 
I am specifically talking about the Predators, of course, that I've been talking about this whole video. It's astounding to me because this site is more of a threat than you actually realize. Now, because Korra is mainly a international site, it's pretty much surprising that any governmental agency hasn't stepped in at this point, considering the amount of immeasurable problems that this site has. Over my relatively short time on Korra reporting and stopping predators, I've seen them from all types of places, from Europe to Asia to the Americas, they're everywhere pretty much. And it's pretty surprising that Korra hasn't been shut down to this. So to Korra, I think that this site, in order to flourish, has to be given an ultimative. Either massively reduce the predator problem, or face being shut down completely. I'm serious, I'm talking some TikTok level shit. Have you ever been a member of the Chinese Communist Party? Senator, I'm Singaporean, no. Have you ever been associated or affiliated with the Chinese Communist Party? No, Senator. Again, okay. I'm Singaporean. Let me ask you some hopefully simple questions. You and I know, I know what the comments are gonna say. Censorship, censorship, blah, blah, blah. But if there are actual kids being harmed every day, what's a little harm in one website being banned in a sea of predators who want to take advantage of this site's unique lack of punishment and moderation? What makes this even worse is what I've talked about earlier, which is the private messaging, which features and holds a severe lack of oversight and moderation, which of course is bad if multiple kids every day are being groomed on Korra. I'm serious, if you are a child or teen who is watching this video or has stumbled across this topic once upon a time, please whatever you do. Do not talk to adults. I do not care who they are. They can be the fucking present for all I care. Do not message them back. If they message you, block and report. That is all you need to do. And for better measure, go ahead and delete Korra. It's a shithole anyway. And for the adults in the room who are still here, please, please, please check on your kids if you have them. Tell them the dangers of apps like this, and give them proper education about how to deal with topics of this nature. And I'm serious, talk with your kids, because once a kid has no community, they go to the online space. And once a child is that vulnerable, that's when the grooming happens. So take those precautions. If you are a avid user of Korra and are currently watching this, Please take heed of my warning. Report these predators for good. There are resources down below to report predators if you see them, such as the NCMEC or National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, the FBI, Cyber Crimes Unit, and the Child Exploitation and Online Protection, or CEOP. There is also a link to the Darkness to Light Stewards of Children website. Take all these links and use them as you will. Please, protect your kids, protect these kids, do whatever you can to stop the problem at hand, because Korra seems to be doing jack shit about it. And of course, spread this hashtag around to as many places as you can. I don't care if you get reported for spam for it, because it's important that people see this and that people are aware of this problem. I see far too many stories of kids being taken advantage on Korra, and I feel like this is way too common. If you see anything, report it, please. And with that being said, I think this video, this documentary, this exposition is over. A big giant special thanks to my collaborator by the name of Kiryu's Way. Without him, this video would never be whole. Go ahead and answer this video and show him support, because I think he's very cool. With that being said, this documentary is over. Hopefully you enjoyed, dislike it if you dislike it, and we are out.